You may not notice it, but you're generating more data now today than you ever have before. There's been all sorts of studies done on this. If you take a look at a graph of average data creation over time, you'll see it's basically just an exponential curve, and that's pretty nuts to think about. But what would you do if something happened and you lost all your data today? Do you keep backups? How do you even keep backups? All valid questions, none of which I will be answering today. For today's video, I wanna focus on once you've decided that you need some sort of storage solution, where would you start? And what did I end up going with after weeks of trying to make the right decision for my storage server needs? Well, stick with me and I'll share my thoughts and experiences and hopefully give you some direction of what would work best for you. Your phone, MacBook, PC, they can only hold so much data before they fill up. And when they do, we have two options, offload the data or stop generating new data. No more downloading apps, taking photos, downloading music and videos for offline streaming or saving anything. Yeah, we could also delete things to make room, but then we have to sit down and decide what we're keeping, what we're not keeping. So really there's just kind of one option in my eyes after all, and that's offloading our precious data somewhere. And this is where my journey began and yours is too. Having a home server is an amazing cost effective with an asterisk way to store all our data in one place and connect to it over a home network. And getting one up and running can be easier than you think. Naturally, I first wanted to learn about the absolute easiest way to spin up some sort of storage and get it connected over the network so I can start dumping my data onto it right away. And what I found was this can be done simply by grabbing any old Windows computer, plugging a hard drive into it, and making that new drive a shared drive on your network. Within just a few minutes, you can have a dedicated network accessible storage space. So that's it, right? Let's just do that. Well, no, there are a few issues here, but we'll come back to this in a bit. The second easiest option is probably to buy a dedicated network attached storage device or NAS device for short. These will be kind of like these little hard drive boxes that all look the same from brands like Synology, QNAP, uh, Asus Store. Admittedly, I've never used one of these devices. So yes, you can conclude then that indeed this is not the route that I went for my first home server, but they typically offer easy to use software as well as some more advanced settings and supported features, taking them a giant step up above just sharing a drive over your network. They tend to be a bit pricey, however, especially when you compare them to our third and final option, which is repurposing existing hardware or an existing computer you already own to run Unraid or TrueNAS as an operating system. Now, if you've heard the previous sentence, you're probably in one of two camps. Either you just mentally checked out because you didn't know other operating systems outside of Windows and Mac existed, or you've heard of TrueNAS and Unraid and you're wondering why you keep hearing about them in your research or which one is better. Which dedicated NAS OS should you choose? Well, that falls outside the scope of this video as there's no quick way to talk about each and compare them. So for now, we'll circle back and compare each of the three main options I've mentioned. So for option number one, that was our easiest option, which was grabbing any Windows computer, plugging a hard drive into it and making that new drive a shared drive. Some pros of this approach would be one, it doesn't have to be a dedicated machine. You can literally plug one or two or however many hard drives you want into your existing gaming machine and have the drive show up right there in File Explorer, right click, give access to, advanced sharing, and like literally a few clicks later, you're done. Of course, you're also free to use an old PC that may just be sitting around collecting dust if you don't wanna weigh down and clutter your main PC and you'd rather just have a dedicated computer tucked away in a closet or something out of the way, then that's perfectly fine. Second pro would be that it's super fast to set up. It's like just plugging in a hard drive, right click, done. The third pro of this option is that there's very low cost involved. This option could range anywhere from free up to the cost of buying one or more drives. And finally, four, this is familiar. You probably already know how to use Windows. So there's really no learning curve, maybe 10 minutes or so if you have to do a quick Google search on how to share a network drive if you've never done it before, but it's honestly just a few clicks and it's super easy. And now onto the cons of this method. Number one, having a single hard drive shared to your home network can be a problem. If that hard drive dies, so does all your data. This can be fixed somewhat by adding a second drive using the same or similar size drive and then using Windows to make what's called a mirrored drive, sometimes also referred to as a RAID 1. This mirror is just basically two copies of your data across two drives so that in the event that one of those two drives fails, you have an opportunity to replace the failed drive while all your data is kept safe on the other one. The second drawback to this option would be basic and or inefficient storage. Your total storage will be limited to the size of your hard drives, or if you use a mirror, you'll lose half of your storage. So what do I mean by that? 
So if you buy one one terabyte hard drive, you'll have roughly one terabyte of space. Makes sense, right? If you want that data to be mirrored across two drives for a little more protection, then you'll need to buy two one terabyte hard drives. So even though you've paid for two terabytes of total storage, you're only getting half of that because we're keeping two copies of your data effectively in our mirror. If you want to expand your storage in the future, you're stuck either adding and mapping more drives, or if your case doesn't have room to hold any more drives, you'll be stuck temporarily copying all your data somewhere else while you remove your old one terabyte hard drives, replace them with something larger like four terabyte hard drives before copying all your data back. The third and final drawback for this simple to set up solution is that Windows itself is just dumb. So Windows may decide to randomly do an update while you're accessing your data, or maybe reboot in the middle of the night and then the next morning you wake up and your shared network drive is no longer available on whatever device you're trying to access it from. And then you have to, if it's in a closet, go dig it out, plug a screen into it or something, reboot it. Uh, it's just not good. All I'm trying to say is that there are better host operating systems for your NAS. As for our second option into our home storage journey, there's those pre-made NAS devices from Synology and others. So pros to those, number one, they aim to be compact, power efficient, and simple to set up. They are typically super space saving, just basically a little bit bigger than the size of the hard drives themselves. Basically the manufacturers want you to have the least friction possible, getting some reliable storage up and running. Another advantage to these devices is that they often offer more advanced features and can make use of more space efficient storage layouts using more advanced RAID configurations, where less of your hard drive storage space is lost to redundancy. Meaning if you had a four bay NAS, which is a device that holds four hard drives, maybe you only end up sacrificing one hard drive worth of storage space to keeping redundant data, making your storage pool 75% efficient while still allowing up to one out of any of the four drives in that device to fail without losing any data. Compare this to sharing a mirror drive over the network with Windows, which is a 50% efficiency of storage. Pro number three for dedicated home NAS devices is that they come with their own software that's not Windows and is typically much more stable and predictable. This typically allows you to run apps and other things and often have options for offsite backups where a copy of your data can be sent to another physical location for even more safety against data loss in the event that something unforeseen happens. But the main con to these dedicated NAS devices is typically the price. You definitely pay for all the engineering and convenience so that will be up to you to decide if it's worth the cost. And secondly, expandability is like a bit of an issue. For example, if you decide in the future that you'd like it to be more than a NAS, you know, more of a home server, you're for sure gonna be limited by this storage appliance form factor. Which leads me to my third and final comparison point, repurposing already owned hardware or a complete computer and running a purpose-built storage OS like Unraid or TrueNAS. Pro number one, the main benefit here is how you get full control. How much RAM do you want? What size case? How much CPU do you need? Do you even need a GPU? Who knows? It depends on what you end up running on this NAS and if it ends up becoming more of a comprehensive home server in the future. But that's the great part. You can build it custom just like you would a DIY gaming PC and this device can grow with you as your needs evolve thanks to standardized hardware. Your limit here really is you and with this option, it'll be what you decide to build. Pro number two is flexible cost. This option could range from free, if you already have everything on hand, like an old gaming PC or something, all the way up to a completely overkill 96 core Threadripper purpose-built system if you wish to go that route. That's totally up to you. Advantage number three here is that Unraid and TrueNAS are both incredible operating systems when it comes to network attached storage and even beyond their base functionality. They both have a huge user base and there's lots of information online to help you if you get stuck while trying to figure something out. Just a quick note, maybe I should have mentioned this a little bit earlier, but Unraid is a paid software, whereas TrueNAS is free. But either way, both Unraid and TrueNAS have some amazing storage efficient drive layout options, as well as some really slick software happening under the hood that you just won't find in the other options that I mentioned. In full disclosure, there really is only one main con with going this route, and that would be complexity. This option for sure has the biggest layering curve, and at times I was stuck in analysis paralysis, meaning I couldn't decide what was the best way forward. So I would put off setting up either an Unraid or a TrueNAS server because I didn't want to choose the wrong hardware or software combination. The best advice I can give someone who's stuck in this position is just literally set something up and just tinker with it. I really do think that that is the only way you're ever going to get a feel and an idea of what's right for you and your use case. Also, Unraid does offer a free trial that is super useful for this exact reason, and TrueNAS is just free. 
So this is just my opinion and a little information on each of the three main options I think you should be considering when you're looking for your first NAS. But now it's time I reveal what I chose as my first NAS device, which was kind of a mix of option one and option three we talked about. Initially, I just added two one terabyte hard drives configured in a Windows mirror into a retired gaming PC and then shared that mirror drive to my home network. And this was fine for a couple of months, but that one terabyte of space got filled pretty quickly and that's when I decided that I would give Unray a try on a dedicated machine. I got myself a 30 day trial license, tried it out, and being the enthusiast I am, I really enjoyed what was on offer from Unraid. And that's the solution I've been using now for about a year. We actually have a video up on the channel about the build I installed Unraid on, which is a NZXT H1 V1 with some modifications to hold five hard drives. In case you were interested, you can check that out. It was one of the earlier videos we put up on the channel, so don't judge it too harshly. So drop a like on this video if you found any of this information useful. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below. And I'll try to queue up that build video of my Unraid NAS here at the end. Thanks for watching.